As many of you know, I designed and built this orrery several years ago. I want to thank you now, as I've done be in the past, for all of your uh, subscriptions and likes uh, to my channel um, and the tremendous number of uh, compliments I've gotten on the work. One of the things that I find most difficult is many of you have asked for plans to build uh, an orrery like mine. And I've tried to uh, accommodate this. Um, as, as you know, if you've listened to my videos, I used a program called uh, Gearotic Motion to design the gear layout. And on my website, I uploaded my project file for Gearotic. What I found out recently is that uh, Gearotic has uh, updated to a new version and my project file is no longer readable. But beyond that, I think there's probably a better way to communicate um, the information that you need to build an orrery like this. What I've done to accommodate this request is to create a PDF file with my 3D model in it. Now, some of you may be aware that PDF files have had the ability for quite a few years now to uh, allow you to render a 3D object in them. And I'll show you how that works. And by the way, if your version can't do this, then you haven't updated Adobe Reader in a very long time, and I suggest you do. But when you bring up the PDF file, it'll look like this, and there'll be this little note here telling you to click to activate. And once you do that, it comes to life, and now you can you know, rotate the model in space, and uh, I'm using the left mouse button, by the way, to uh, to rotate the model. If you use the center, uh, the wheel, you can scroll uh, in and out. And if you hold down both buttons, you can uh, move the object. But the fun begins when you click this button. Um, this brings up my actual model tree from my CAD program. And, you know, what it's showing at this level are all of the various sub-assemblies. And then if you opened up one of the sub-assemblies, you can see all of the CAD files that make up that sub-assembly. So let me show you what I mean. If you wanted to know, um, you know the specifications for this gear, for example, you could just click on it. And what that's going to do is highlight in the tree the name of the CAD file that I use to draw this gear. And my naming convention um, is gear 106T, which means that this is a 106 tooth gear. Now, all of the gears on the Ori have the, uh, the same modulus, which means all the tooth patterns are identical. So, um, and just so you know, I used a modulus one cutter um, you don't know what that means you're gonna to have to do some gear study as I did when I got into this but uh, the point is all of the gears are cut using the same um, tooth profile this they're all they're all cut using the same cutter and my choice of a modulus one was somewhat arbitrary I mean that's what gave me the orrery of this size if you used a different cutter, it would either make the orrery smaller or larger, but it wouldn't affect its um, the mechanism at all. So anyway, um, you can click on you know anything in here, and it's going to tell you what it is you're looking at. Um, you know, this is a 53 tooth gear, and this is a 33 tooth gear. Um, likewise, if you wanted to see an entire assembly, um, like let's take a look at Saturn, you can click here and it's going to highlight all the pieces that make up Saturn and if you right click on that and say isolate, then you're only looking at that particular part of the model. So it's easy to break things down and take a good look at them. And when you when you 
watch all of my build videos, and I've put up a lot of them, as you probably know. I take you through all of the steps. You know, like when we get to this, I show you exactly how this is all assembled and which gears are pinned to what and which gears are fixed. So there certainly is enough information if you're so inclined uh, to be able to build this orrery. And I know for a fact that um, one of you out there has already um, built the orrery using um, actually they didn't even have this. I'll show you what they had because if you, if you scroll down in the PDF file what I did was I took the uh, image from Gearotic, I just took a you know a, a screenshot of it, and then I you know typed in the the number of teeth in each gear as you work your way down uh, the gear train. And um, one of my subscribers took this and only this and and built a working model of the Ori. So it it certainly is doable. But you know now you have a lot more information because you can actually work your way through here and see exactly what's going on. And again, when that's done in conjunction with the videos that I created, uh, there's plenty of information here to build one of these. There's one piece of information, though, that I'd like to point out, because I'm not sure um, if I made it completely clear in the video. And that is how the, dri how the drivetrain is working. When you're turning the crank, ultimately you're turning this gear here. Now, above that and running throughout the model is a uh, a tube it runs all the way through the center of the model, and all of the gears, uh, all of these assemblies are affixed to that tube. But inside that tube is a rod, and that rod is affixed to this gear. So when you turn this gear, this rod inside the tube is turning, and where it comes out at the top, on the uppermost um, gear here, this one, this gear is fixed to that, to that rod. So actually when you're turning the crank, this is actually the gear that you're turning. Now this gear in turn turns this one, because that's affixed to this one. They both turn together. That motion is translated to this gear, which is affixed to this one, which, this one, which turns this gear, and so on down the, ri down the, uh, down the gear train. Um, and I hope that will help you understand how this mechanism is working. But it's just a, a, a cascade of gears moving down, uh, a, you know, a, a rather large gear train. Uh, all driven by this top gear, which is driven by the one on the bottom. So that's pretty much how it works, and I'm going to, uh, you know, place a link to this both here on, uh, you know, with the YouTube video and also um, on my website. And when you get to my website, there are uh, no shortage of ways to get to the orrery. I mean, you can click on big picture here or the little one down here and there's even a, a menu item here that you can click on and you know here you know I give you a high level overview and then I have all of these sort of chapters and in the first one it's it's the in introduction and design specification so that's the area you'd be headed for and again I have a host of information here um, I also have I'm, I'm going to leave the original you know, description of Gearotic Motion, because uh, this this will take you to the uh, the Gearotic website, but this link will give you my project file. The reason I'm doing that is I still think that Gearotic Motion is a very valuable tool for somebody who's going to be working with um, gears and, and designing things with gears. I have no, you know, relationship with them. It's just that the program is, it's a good program and it, and it does what, you know, it's a very specialized program. It's designed for working with gears, but you can design, you know, orries and clocks and Rube Goldberg machines and, you know, anything you want. And it does so much for you 
you know, that a CAD program can't, you know, because this is so specialized. Um, you know, it gives you the ability after you've built something to, um, you know, to animate it and see how everything is affecting everything else. Um, and in the gear design, this is the part that's really neat. Um, you have a, a wide variety of gear types, you know, standard spur gears, which you wouldn't use for an Ori. An Ori uses epicycloidal gears, and you can see that the different uh, tooth form that those have. That's very important, by the way. Um, clocks and Ori's and so forth need this tooth form. Um, this is a very low friction tooth form, and it's also a low power. And since uh, you know an orrery doesn't require a whole lot of power, you're looking for the low friction that this offers because you're driving you know 30 some odd gears in the train. But anyway, when you uh, are in this module designing gears, you can just enter the uh, you know, the number of teeth you want on the main wheel and the teeth you want um, on the pinion. And it just takes care of all that for you. Uh, there are some, a lot of parameters you can enter here. You know, the modulus of your cutter, and the pressure angles, and all sorts of other things that, if you know about gears, you'll know what all this means. And if you don't, you're going to have to do some gear research before you can make one of these. But anyway, um, given all that, it puts out a ton of information. Um, you know, as you're working, and then. You even have the ability, if you so choose, to um, you know have the system draw um, uh, spokes for the gears, and they have all sorts of different uh, patterns, and you can control uh, all sorts of stuff. So um, it couldn't be easier. Uh, anyway, once a gear is drawn, you um, you import it into your uh, into your project, and you just keep connecting them and connecting them until you built what you, whatever it is you're building. So, um, I think this is a very useful program. But obviously, the PDF file that I've created is giving you the ability to uh, ignore me and just look at the at the CAD file. One thing that's happened though is um, this is the, the one the version you're looking at here is uh, version one of, of Gearotic, and they're up to version two. And sadly, version two can't read the files that um, that version one created. So there's a way around that, and I'm just going to show it to you um, in case you're interested. When you get to the Gearotic website and go to the download page, you're going to find, um, you know, the top entry is always going to be the, you know, the most current stable version. You're going to want to go ahead, click this, and run the install program. But when you're all done, you're going to want to come down here to where it says Archive of, uh, you know, Version One, and you're going to want to download this. All that is is a zip file with one uh, program in it, which happens to be version one of Gearotic. All you need to do is copy that executable file into the, um, the install that you did for the 2.0 version. And now you have access to both Gearotic 1.0, and you know, of course, it creates an icon for you know, Gearotic 2. So you don't lose anything. You just now have the ability to go to both of them. If you're going to read my project file, you're going to want to, you know, use this one, you know, Gearotic 1. But if you want to build something new, I would highly recommend Gearotic 2, which has a, a zillion new features that are fun. So I think that about sums it up. That gives you. You now have access, you know, through this file of, I believe, everything you need to uh, to build an ORE. You have, you know, all of the all of the gear ratios and how the gears interact with one another. And you know, once you know that, the rest is just engineering. Um, so, 
I hope this uh, that you all find this helpful, or those of you who want to build one find it helpful. Um, and once again, I want to thank you all for uh, the tremendous um, support you've given me uh, in the comments and such. And uh, I hope to be back soon with a new project. I am thinking about one right now. Um, and all I'll tell you is that it, it involves gears. So until next time, uh, take care.